Uh, well, thank you, Nick. And it's always good to uh, respond to invitations to speak to the CIS, although at one stage I thought I might have trouble uh, getting here tonight. I don't normally talk about this issue because it's obviously the most uh, arid and sterile subject to discuss in Australian public policy. You'll notice the politicians always avoid it. They hate talking about the ABC. John Howard, in the 11 years he was Prime Minister, if you spoke to him in private, he had an awful lot to say about the ABC. In public, very little. He was very wise. And it may well be that Tony Abbott's the same. Tony Abbott has made a couple of comments so far about the ABC. They've been a little bit contentious, but he hasn't said much. And it'll be interesting to see how the Abbott government deals with the ABC. And of course, the same applies very much to Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard. They didn't talk a lot about the ABC. It seems to me, looking at uh, news and current affairs at the moment, that our politicians are more prepared to talk about changes to the age pension. This is a more uh, comfortable subject for them to deal with than a discussion about the ABC. And this is extremely unhealthy. And I think it's the sign of a country and a polity and a political and media system that doesn't know how to discuss this issue. There's a real ghost in the debate, and that is being able to find an acceptable framework to engage in this issue. So people who've got different perspectives can actually discuss it sensibly. And the great danger in these discussions about the ABC is they very quickly descend into a counterproductive uh, shouting match. So I'd like to begin by saying that I have a great regard for the ABC, for the enormous professionalism there. It's a tremendous institution which has been fundamental to Australian public and intellectual life for a very long period of time. It is, by any measure, a great institution. I've had some uh, long associations with the ABC that I'd like to recognise. A, a very uh, successful collaboration with Barry Cassidy on Insiders for quite some time. And then some very successful collaborations with uh, Sue Spencer at the ABC. She is one of the great producers. There's no question at all about that. Having said that, I'm sick of the debate about the ABC. I think it's the greatest phony debate uh, in Australian public life today. And I'd like to offer three perspectives at the start. And the first one is every media organisation has a culture. Every media organisation has a culture. Whether we're talking now about Channel 9 or SBS or the Daily Telegraph or The Australian or the New York Times or The Guardian uh, or Fox News or CNN, every media organisation has a culture. And we need to bear that in mind in terms of this debate. Why is this the case? Why does every media organisation have a culture? Well, they have a culture because it's fundamental to their brand. It's fundamental to their business, to their job to getting loyalty, to inspiring people to listen to them. It's why, people, it's why people identify with the media outlet. So uh, this is even more important in today's media when we have a fragmented marketplace, when we have a lot of structural change, a, a lot of brands in trouble, new brands emerging. So. It's fundamentally important for every media organisation to have a brand. And this leads to the question, of course, well, what's the ABC's culture? What is the political culture of the ABC? If we had to profile it, what would we say? We often talk about the political profile and political culture of all these other media organisations I've talked about, but we never pose the question, what is the political culture of the ABC. And if we're to have a sensible debate about this, that's the starting point. That's the first question you ask. You don't ask, was the ABC biased last night in terms of the debate between Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott or between Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott? They are futile questions. 
you start with the honest and intellectual question, what is the political culture of the ABC, and you address that issue. Now, the reason this is important is because the way media organisations operate these days, if you, want to, if you want to simplify it, you could have income on the horizontal axis and politics on the vertical axis. And essentially, all media organisations define themselves and their brand and their position in the market according to those two axes, according to the vertical axis of politics and the horizontal axis of income. That's how it works. Now, this, of course, creates a particular challenge for public broadcasters because what is the political branding of public broadcasters? Are they to the left? Are they to the right? How do they position themselves in the marketplace? Well, they have to and they do. And it's about time we started to have a sensible and frank debate about this because that's what happens. If you run a media organisation today, then you position yourself in the political marketplace and you position yourself in the income marketplace. And we ought to start looking and analysing the ABC according to those criteria. Now, one of the interesting features about the ABC, of course, is its, is its multiplicity of outlets. This is its great strength. And this is important because what it does is it builds up a diverse range of constituencies. And these are very loyal constituencies. And I think one of the interesting features about the ABC, and it's very proud of this, and it's right to be proud of this, but it's important to, it's important to observe this, it's got fantastic loyalty on the part of its viewers and its listeners. And this is the source of its strength. This is the source of its strength as a broadcaster, as an organisation, and, and it's the source of its political power. And let's be frank, the ABC has got political power. And it's got the support of a not insignificant segment of the Australian population. Why has it got that support? Well, it's got that support for various reasons. The ABC presents itself, of course, as an independent and impartial public broadcaster. Well, sure, that's the official propaganda line. But beneath that, of course, the reason the audience is so loyal is not because the ABC is an independent and impartial broadcaster. The, the reason there is such loyalty is because of the brand. It's because of the ABC brand. It's because of the values that the ABC represents in the political marketplace. Well, what are they? Well, I haven't come here uh, to uh, talk about this in great detail because I've done no study about this. I've done no survey about this. But I would, I would make a few observations. The first one is the ABC is too great a defender of itself. It's too pompous and it's too self-righteous. Uh, I can remember the fight back period. Fight back was proposing very significant cuts to the ABC budget. Go back and look at that election campaign and the ABC's coverage of that election campaign. Not good, not fair, not independent, certainly not impartial. It was all about the ABC using the resources of the ABC to defend the interests of the ABC as an organisation against a political party that actually declared it wanted to reform the ABC and cut its budget. So I think this is an important point, and I noticed before uh, voting day in 2013, the ABC was again most anxious to quiz coalition politicians on air about uh, the ABC budget. Now, I'm not saying they shouldn't do it, but it seemed to me the way they did it indicated a lack of priority. Well, what does the ABC stand for? I just pose some questions at this stage which I think ought to be posed because I think they do need an answer. And of course, the ABC is not a monolithic organisation. As I've said, it's got a lot of outlets, it's a diverse organisation, it's got all sorts of tentacles, but I think nonetheless, it does have its own culture. What over the last five years has been the position of the ABC on climate change? If you think it's been possible to identify a position. Now you might think 
that the ABC has been completely uh, balanced and unbiased on this issue and therefore it's not possible to discern a, an overall position of the ABC on this issue. Frankly, uh, my own view would be that there has been uh, on balance an ABC position. Uh, I think that the ABC has been strongly on the side of advocating action on climate change, strongly on the side of suggesting that this is an alarming problem, um, uh, very anxious to promote international action and Australian action, and at the same time reluctant to point out the difficulties about this issue, whether we're talking now about queries in the science or more particular problems in terms of the lack of a global binding uh, agreement and treaty post-Kyoto, problems about the economic implications and consequences for Australian action. So I think that if you look at the debate overall, it seems to me there has been a very uh, strong ABC position. Secondly, on economic reform. We talk a lot about economic reform these days. We talk about it all the time. We've been talking about it for five years. We talk about the Hawke-Keating reforms. And what, and what do we mean by economic reform? Well, essentially, we tend to mean a more market-based approach to issues, more deregulation, uh, the application of the user-pay principle. Um, uh, is the ABC committed to economic reform? What are the great examples of uh, the ABC ventilating public policy issues which go to the heart of ensuring that Australia is a more competitive and a more productive economy? Uh, none immediately spring to mind as far as, I, as far as I can recollect. I'm certain that there are some, but it would seem to me that the ABC is more inclined to support public investment rather than private investment, regulation rather than deregulation, uh, higher taxes or redistributive taxes rather than lower taxes. And if this is the case, then it's very important. If you look at the uh, most recent six years of the Rudd-Gillard government, um, where did the ABC, for example, point out the problems of the Fair Work Act, which are now being ventilated a lot? Where did the ABC point out the problems of the very significant Rudd government fiscal stimulus, which is widely recognised now to have been too large and to have had very considerable defects? Where did the ABC point out the problems with the Rudd government's commitment to government intervention, uh, industry policy and more and greater subsidies for Australian industry? And where, to repeat an earlier point, uh, did the ABC point to the flaws in a lot of the carbon policy arrangements? I think these are very relevant issues. If I move to asylum seekers and ask the question, do you think the ABC has been, been completely impartial and neutral on this issue? Or do you think that over a period of years it's possible to identify in the ABC's political culture a fairly clear position on this issue? Well, as I say, I pose the question, what about national security laws? Do you think there's been an ABC position on national security laws? And indeed, given recent events and recent, uh, and, and, uh, and recent stories uh, run and published by the ABC, what do we think about the ABC's approach to the debate about a national security confidentiality versus publication of these issues. I could go on and on, whether we're talking about same-sex marriage or a whole host of foreign policy issues. I'll stop there, but the purpose of my comments today is to say we need to change the way we have the discussion about the ABC. It's not a good discussion. We need to look at the way contemporary media organisations function and recognise that the ABC has got dilemmas here between its responsibilities on the one hand as a public broadcaster and on the other hand as a media organisation that has got to succeed in today's marketplace. Thank you.